a dark place. But you know what? That is actually great news for you. And here's why. It's when it's darkest in the world that your light shines brightest. Today, we're going to be talking about using a media that millions, actually billions of people across the world are listening to at this very moment. It's a way for you to connect with your audience in a way that inspires them, in a way that motivates them, and in a way that gets them on the goal to their destination so that they can learn more, create more, and grow more. Welcome to the Bunker Bash. My name is Ed Rush, five-time number one best-selling author and your host for the most positive place on the planet for insanely implementable ideas. This is Expert Week, and today I've got a special guest coming up for you. All right, hey, welcome back to Bunker Bash. My name is Ed Rush, and today I've got Paul Culligan, my friend, who's going to come on and talk about podcasting. Before I do that, I just want to jump in and say hello to some of you who have just joined us in chat. And by the way, if you're watching this on live uh, on video, we go live every single day, Monday through Friday, 10 o'clock a.m. Pacific time and 1 o'clock p.m. Uh, 10 o'clock a.m. Pacific time, 1 o'clock p.m. Eastern time every single day of the week, at least now, uh, to show you some of the ways to grow your brand, connect with your audience, and have more fun. But we do this live, and then it gets recorded. So I'd love to say hello to a bunch of our friends. Hello, Denise. Good to see you. Iron Core, my man Oz. Welcome, Dr. Tom. Welcome back to Lisa. Hello. Good to see you, John Teague, uh, as well as Dr. Wendy Lee. I love that. When it's darkest in the world. Hey, the great news is people are looking uh, for you. Hello, Sheree. Good to see you. Wendell, my man. Welcome back, Doug and Judy. <laughs> Good to see you as well. Gina, yeah, the cool graphics, Andrew. That's a first time for this show. Uh, <laughs> David just bought a super sweet microphone, so let's get it. Hello, Diana. Welcome back to the show. All right, so uh, my guest uh, is my friend, Paul Culligan. I'm going to bring Paul onto the show and just say, first of all, welcome. Paul is a person uh, who has been podcasting literally before iTunes, okay? Uh, and so this is a guy, what, by the way, Paul, when was it that you first started podcasting? Was it like 2010, 2009? What was the first year? 2004. Yep. <laughs> way, way, way early. You know, one step ahead, you're a visionary. Two steps ahead, you're a martyr. I have no idea what I was. You were the pioneer that got shot by all the arrows. So Paul is a friend of mine, and he's the guy who taught me to podcast. And the truth is, Today, I'm learning with you. Uh, I have a podcast out there called Ed Talks, which at this point hasn't launched the way that I want it to. So I asked Paul to come on and share his expertise. But before I do that, I just want to tell you a little personal anecdote about Paul. Paul wrote, uh, yeah. I think he's written about 10, 11 books at this point. But there was a book called Multicast Marketing Machines that Paul was creating. And he asked me, he said, hey, would you uh, consider putting a chapter inside of the book. I said, Paul, I'd love to put a chapter in your book. Thank you for the opportunity. Listen, I'm on the road right now, so I'm super busy, and I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get it to you in time for the book. And he said, no problem, Ed. Listen, well, what I want to do is let's just take a recent talk. We had done an event together, and he said, let's just take a recent talk, and uh, I'll take the talk, and I'll have it transcribed, and then I'll have a ghostwriter edit that chapter. We'll just send it to you for approval, and then we can put it in the book. And I said, that would be fine. So Paul did that, sent it to me for approval. It looked great. I sent it back to him. And then about a month later, Paul said, listen, Ed, I just want to thank you for your contribution to the book. Uh, it just launched yesterday. And I said, Paul, it's the least I could, could do. And Paul texted me back and said, it truly yeah. was literally the least, <laughs> the hey, it's least all about you strategy. could do. <laughs> What's that? It's all about what? All about strategy. <laughs> so... Um, but, you know, Paul's been amazing at creating uh, content and using it in multiple places. Today, we're going to talk about podcasting. But before we do, Paul, welcome to the show, man. It's good to have you. Well, thank you. Now, I thought bunker bash meant we had to do these from a bunker. So I can go home or, or, or what, you what's got the, the You got that. That's not that. By the way, that's not even a background. This is actually Paul, where Paul underneath his house. Yeah, uh, exactly. Oregon. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm all into this, man. <laughs> <laughs> you built a you built a bunker, man. I like it. So, how are you been doing, by the way? And you ready to rock and roll? I'm ready to rock and roll. It's it's an interesting time. I, I want to tell a story because it's very um, 
apropos to what we're talking about here. So a couple of weeks ago, one of my associates um, did a live stream because that's what everybody in the marketing space does right now is they do a live stream um, about how to handle the time of Corona. And he does this stream and it was fantastic. It was the framework that I've been taking the entire Corona thing on. It was, it was the best piece of video I've ever seen. Now, the only on, on this topic, um, the only problem was um, either his internet connection was bad or my internet connection was bad or Facebook was freaking out. And a lot, uh, uh, and I, you know, the, a lot of the content was like that. Now have no fear because on the screen, you know, I saw his microphone, the microphone that I know he uses to record his podcast on. And I know that he would have also recorded the audio of this and released it to his podcast. And I checked about a day later, I checked at the views he got on, on Facebook. And I know that the listens on his podcast would have been 10 times as much at a minimum, 10 times the reach, better audio. So I text him and I say, hey, when's the episode releasing? He goes, well, it's not. I did this as a Facebook live. And I said, well, you're going to release a lot, a lot less people are going to hear this message. A lot less people are going to benefit from what it is that you have to offer. And he texts me back, yeah, I'm sorry. Don't be sorry. Um, think about the tech and think about how you can reach the most amount of people. Now, Ed, you're in a situation where, like, as you said, your podcast isn't doing as well as Facebook Live. So in this particular case, what you're doing now is smart. But let's use the tech to reach the most amount of people with our message. Let's not use the tech to impress our friends that we're using the tech. Make yeah, and the truth, the truth is following, and by the way, a really nice comment, and I wanna find this, uh, let's see. It was John Teague who said, uh, multicast marketing is the book that made me start a podcast. Hey, John. Um, and the truth is this show, Paul, every third or fourth episode, the ones that I want to highlight actually are being turned into podcasts. Absolutely. And, and just that was the like only reason you, I, I volunteered to do this. Exactly. Just like you taught us to, frankly, way back in the day to use one piece of content to stream it multiple across the world. So uh, we're going to get quickly into Paul's tips. He's got nine tips to grow your podcast uh, or to launch a podcast if you want to. Uh, if you just joined us, my name is Ed Rush. This is The Bunker Bash. This is a show, the top nine podcasting tips to broadcast your message. I'm here uh, with my friend, Paul Culligan. You ready to jump into the, the strategies, Paul? Let's do this, man. All right. So take me to strategy number one. Okay. Been doing this for 15 years. First book came out actually two years before the iPhone did. One thing we've learned over the last 16 years is that every podcast needs six, the number six team members to be successful. Okay. Now, a lot of people are saying, oh, I'm the only one doing it. John's got his podcast. Maybe John is wearing all six hats, but you need the six team members to be successful. And I want to walk through these six team members because they're really important. And I have stories of what happens if you don't have that team member and what happens if you do have that team member, but let's go through. Number one, strategy slash review. That's the first team member. Ed, I was on the phone with a massive podcaster, millions and millions of downloads, who could tell me the strategy for his show with such clarity. It, it was as if mom had needle pointed it, you know, when it was right above his desk and he looked at it every day. You know, I mean, he could just tell me this with emotion and passion. And I asked him, how's it going? He goes, I, I don't know. See, strategy and review. Strategy without review, pointless. Review without a strategy, what are we looking for? Strategy review is the first person. You need that person. Do you have that person? All right, Number so two. as you're watching live, someone throw the notes into the chat. So six team members, and Paul's saying it doesn't have to be six people, but it's six roles. And the first one is strategy and review. Strategy review is number one. Number two is kind of obvious. You need the talent. But what's interesting is the talent doesn't necessarily have to be brand new. I've been saying for years, I said in multicast marketing, you know, I said that, you know, take stuff from the archives, make it a podcast. Everybody's like, oh no, that's lame. You need to recreate your own stuff, blah, 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 nerd, nerd, nerd. And then all of a sudden, you know what happened last weekend? Oprah released the last 25 years of her TV show as a podcast. Okay. Interesting. The talent, you need the talent. That's all number right. two. 
And for most of you, your talent is you <laughs> or exactly. the guests that you bring. Hey, yeah. That one's usually easy. <laughs> okay. Number three is the edit. Lots of options for edit. Um, sometimes you're the one who needs to be editing. Sometimes um, you want to hand the editor editing over to someone cheap. Sometimes you want to hand the editor editing over to someone expensive, depending on what you're trying to do. But someone's got to edit the thing. Nice, simple, easy. Number four is the publish. Somebody has to publish the thing. And this industry of publishing, it changes a lot. It changes on a consistent and constant basis. Ed, what do you think has more Americans every day? Podcasting? Spotify or Pandora? Do you remember Pandora? Yeah, the old, uh, well, I guess it's not old. Um, I, I watched the movie Avatar the other day, by the way. So yeah, Pandora, that's a different Pandora, Pandora. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, What do you uh, think has the most amount of North Americans every day? Spotify. No. Podcast. No. Pandora. <laughs> Pandora, for real. Pandora oh. reaches more North Americans every day than Spotify or podcasting does. And here's the funny thing. Pandora has podcasting on it. Huh. Now, Ed, is the Ed show on Pandora? It's interesting. I just saw on your website, you've got a show about Pandora taking over the podcast world. This is super interesting. Keep going. Yeah. So anyway, the published thing, make sure as new people pop up that you're there. Um, Clear Channel, um, spending millions and millions of dollars promoting their radio app, the radio.com app. And you know what? They're taking podcasts right now. So publishing isn't just an issue of uploading it to your feed and clicking the publish button. It's an issue of making sure that you are everywhere a podcast should go. So number one, strategy review. Number two, talent. Number three, edit. Number four, publish. Number five, promotion. You know, a podcast without promotion is like a, you know, webcast from your basement. Wait a minute, from your bunker. Wait a minute. <laughs> um, it, it's got to be promoted. This idea that you just put something up at, at Apple and people find you and all of a sudden you have a million users, that's no more true than it has been. You go on YouTube and you find mm -hmm. a million users or you make a website and you find a million users or you go to TikTok and you find a million users. That lie, we got to get over it. And and I blame Kevin Costner. I blame Kevin Costner. If you build it, they will come. Yeah. Um, it's no more true for this. The thing has to be promoted. Now, the funny thing is, is if you just think through promotion, it's not that complicated. Ed, I had a client, have a client who said to me, well, Paul, how can we promote this thing? And three minutes earlier, that person said they had a million email opens a day. Huh. huh. Opens. Huh. A million. Interesting. And they asked me how they could promote the show. Not complicated. Okay. Then the last one, and this one's huge. Someone's got to manage the whole thing. You know, you see these podcasts that come out every often regular because this didn't happen before this or that kind of thing. Somebody's got to project manage the whole thing. And those are the six hats. And the very first step of getting a podcast out is understanding who's going to wear those six hats. Now, we've got a website called Team Before Tech because you everybody usually thinks, oh, what microphone, what host, what name, what artwork? No, Team Before Tech. Okay. And if you go to teambeforetech.com, we have a copy of our tool called the Team Clarity Matrix. And basically, it's just six name badges, and you just write in the name of who each of these people are. And it's okay if it's not you. It's okay if you put in the word Fiverr. It's okay if you put in the word consultant. If it's okay if you put in the word my kid, you know, but all six people need to have a team. So if you go to Team Before Tech, um, you can get our worksheet and uh, six videos about the six different characters and uh, how to get those ready. So that's that's number one on the list. Number one is, is um, every podcast needs six team members to be successful. Six Ed. team members, strategy review, number two, talent, number three, edit, number four, publish, number five, promotion, number six, manage. And by the way, that doesn't have to be this, doesn't have to be six different people. A lot of podcasters start out by being all six of those. Uh, I will tell you that with my podcast, the first person I found was the editor uh, because somebody just to make your podcast sound good and they're not even that expensive. Uh, but the website, and I will throw that into a lower third in just a second, Paul, but it is in the description of this show, both on YouTube and on Facebook. Uh, we've got some goodies to give away for you, and that's not the only one. Uh, in a moment, we're going to give you a great gear list as well. Uh, but the website is Team Before Tech, and number one is your team of six people. Paul Culligan is my guest. We are here on the Bunker Bash teaching the top nine podcasting tips to broadcast your message. Paul, take me to number two. Number two, treat tech as your friend. 
Okay, a lot of people, tech, we've got to conquer it. We've got to figure it out. Treat tech as your friend. Treat tech as your friend. If you're scared of what's going on, you're doing this wrong. Okay. If every morning you get up and you're battling a, a software program or um, a function or a style, no, no, no. Tech does our bidding. We don't do text bidding. Let me give you an example of that. Okay. We've got a piece of tech called Dial Talk Done. I'm going to even pull it up here on the uh, pull it up here on the iPhone. All right. So, Dial Talk Done. There's two buttons. You talk or you import. All right. You talk the podcast through. Once you're done there, you preview or you publish it. Okay, that's it. <laughs> you dial talk, you're done. It takes the audio, it cleans up the audio, it levels the audio, it equalizes the audio, it adds the music at the front and the back, and it publishes it. From eight minutes from the time you push publish, it is live on iTunes. Wait, this is a tool that you're making, you have people have, have access to? Is that the? Yeah, it's in the app store right now. That's pretty cool, man. Yeah, thank ah. you. All right, so where can someone find that? At the App Store oh, okay. <laughs> or, or dialtalkdone.com. It's okay, so so dial talk talk done. Done. Dot com. Okay. Dial it in, talk it out, and you're done. Now, by the way, what if you're one of these people who wants to um it to go to the editor first? You can talk it out and it can send it right to the editor, and then the editor can publish it. That's what if you're the cool. person who wants the editor to publish it and then you or, or editor to edit it and then you want to publish it that day? That's all built into this. But it's it's four buttons, Ed. Even you could handle four buttons. You know, so I've got podcasters who are going out every week getting content out like a regular basis. And then I go to these events and I see people who are like, What microphone should I buy? Ed, who's your favorite stand-up comic? Oh man, I've got a couple. I was watching Hannibal Burris recently. Uh yeah, what microphone does he use? Up on stage? Yeah. I don't know. Wait a minute. How can you? <laughs> well, okay. Who else do you like? Um, Jim Gaffigan. What microphone does Jim use? The one that works. The one, <laughs> the one that's on the stage. <laughs> the one that's on the stage. <laughs> Who's your favorite singer? <laughs> oh, my favorite singer? I don't know. Uh, let's let's say Neil Diamond for the what sake of What microphone does he use? The one that he's in front of him on stage. Exactly. And it works for <laughs> stadiums. It works for arenas, you know? And uh, yet somehow the podcasters, we think our success is in spending all this time to try to figure this out. So if there's software that makes it easy, use it. If there's tech that makes it easy, use it. If there's an editor who will make this easy for you, use it. Tech is your friend, not your enemy. That's number two. All right. So number two is tech is your friend. Here is uh, number two. And... We're at the Bunker Bash. My name is Ed Rush. I'm with Paul Culligan. We are talking about the top nine podcasting tips to grow your brand. Paul, what's number three? Number three, know your niche. It's quite simple. If your podcast is for everybody, your podcast is for nobody. The finer detailed your podcast is, the closer the niche, the more money you're going to make. I have a client calls me, okay? Client says, hey, Paul, that whole advertising thing, how does that work on podcasts? I'm like, well, um, first of all, you got to get about 10,000 downloads per episode for someone to want to put an ad on your show. Yeah. And by the way, that's only about 40 bucks per thousand downloads. So you get 10,000 downloads, you're making about 400 bucks. And by the way, you're only getting about 350 downloads per episode. And he goes, oh, that's all right. The podcast is doing pretty good for me. I'm like, well, good. Define pretty good. He goes, well, I'm getting two or three leads a day. Great. How many do you close? Oh, at least one a day. I'm like, great. Math is easy. So we can take whatever leads worth times 365. What's a lead worth to you? Well, 3,000 grand minimum. I'm 3,000 minimum, not 3,000 grand. I guess that'd be bigger. Um, 3,000 minimum. I'm like, so wait a minute. You are at a minimum closing 3,000 times 365 a year on your podcast that gets less than 350 downloads and has been out for about 10 months. Huh, yeah. <laughs> Love clients like that. And, um, you know, he knows his niche. His niche is very, very, very specific, but they buy. Yeah. You know, and he's not trying to be all things to everybody. He's got his very specific niche. He gives them exactly what they need. They call and they buy so that you know your niche. So million dollar podcast, million dollar podcast, less than 400 downloads per episode. Know yeah, I mean, it's, inter 
Interesting. So Paul and I used to stand up on stage. We used to do these hot seats. So it was Mike Koenigs, Paul Culligan, and me. Uh, and we would bring someone up on stage. You know, and, and basically, we did this for like five years. And someone would sit in between us. And usually one of the first questions that we would ask is, who's your product for? Or who's your message for? Or who, who are you targeting in terms of your niche? And I would say at least half, at least half would say the same thing to that question, which is everyone. And that's not a market. Because the truth is, everyone might need what you have to offer, but everyone doesn't want what you have to offer. So what Paul just said there is really important. If you have a podcast that gets 350 listens, that's not success or failure. It's what happens with your business because of your podcast. And I really like that. You could target America's top CEOs, which are about 500 people, and maybe two of them listen to your podcast, and one of them signs up as a client to work with you for $150,000 a year. Uh, so, so, the, so that's a great point, by the way, which is you figure out how you determine success, but it has to do with your niche or your market. I really yeah. like that. Thanks, Paul. All right. So we are three through nine. So right now I've got uh, number one, your team of six people. Number two, uh, actually, I've got them right here. Hold on. Uh, you're, you're, you need six key team members, and Paul described exactly what those six are. Number two, tech is your friend. Uh, number three is to know your niche. We are in the top nine podcasting tips to broadcast your message. My name is Ed Rush. I'm here with Paul Culligan. Paul, take us to tip number four. Number four, and I love it that you and I are doing this together. Have a conversation, not an interview. People ask me all the time, how do I be a better interviewer? Um, how do I be Oprah? Don't be Oprah. Oprah's Oprah. She's doing a much better job of being Oprah than you are. But you can have a conversation. Ed and I, Ed, bring back up your face. Ed and I are buds. <laughs> we're, we're having a conversation and you're involved with it. Nobody's walking away. You know, I'm looking here at the comments. Nobody said, wow, Ed, your interviewing skills are really convincing me to get a podcast. <laughs> They're seeing that Ed knows Paul. Paul knows Ed. They like each other. We're seeing the results and it's going from there. And the thing is, if you look at your podcast as a chance to have a conversation, everybody listening to this, everybody watching this, everybody live has had a conversation before. And if you know your niche and you have a conversation with a leader in your niche to other people who are listening to your niche, that wins. That beats an interview every single time. Just have a conversation. Yeah, I mean, interesting. So I learned how to interview um, from a guy who used to work at Esquire magazine, one of the top uh, interviewers in the world, a guy named Cal Fussman. Yeah, Cal, he's awesome. It, just an amazing guy, he's and amazing. brilliant guy. And I learned how to ask questions from Cal. And then I basically realized that that wasn't the style that I wanted for a show. Uh, because when you get together, like for example, when Paul and I get together and have lunch, I don't sit over the lunch table and go, so what have you been doing lately? So yeah. how's that working for you? So tell me more. So what's your what are your top five tips for growing your your brand? Right. Like we, I don't ask a question, 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 answer, answer, answer. I ask a question, he answers. We laugh, we tell a story, then we converse about something else, and then I share an idea that I've been using, and then he shares an idea that he's been using. We have a conversation, and I like shows, frankly, that do that. Um, and and by the way. There are times when you do want the person to go a little bit deep on the content, but that's also part of the conversation. And so I actually started that when I started Ed Talks, my podcast, Paul, I, I started it by telling people, these are conversations. These are not Bingo. interviews. These are two people talking about a, a topic Bingo. because I didn't want people coming on and thinking, oh, this host guy talks too much because I wanted yeah. us to be able to, to talk because that's what real people do. Now, if you right. watch, and, and let's workshop this. Yeah. Everybody in the comments right now. And by the way, Fortin boy, been way too long. Jim, been way <laughs> too long. Yeah, so we're just going to say hello to Michael Fortin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, type in everybody. Type in what would you rather hear, a conversation or an interview? I'd be really curious to see. I bet you, you, you know, I bet you the stats will just um, will just tell us the truth. But yeah, conversations are easier. Conversations are more intimate. Conversations are better. You know, I mean, it's it's not that complicated and you've all had conversations in your life. So you can go back to that experience. 
and you don't have to learn how to interview. Now, if you can, it's great, and, and, and you learn great stories and that kind of stuff. But the fact of the matter is, um, conversation, not an interview. Let's hit the next one. Yeah, and actually, just to throw one more thing on that, the place. So, if you watch Joe Rogan, who I think is Bingo. probably top two or three podcasts right now in the world, He's Joe one with a bullet. He just talks. Yeah. He just talks and he goes on a rant and then his guest talks for a little bit. And and I actually learned that initially. If you listen to Howard Stern, and by the way, I know some of you don't like Howard Stern because of the content, and I get that. But if you just listen, that guy, all he does is just have a, literally, he gets paid to have three hours of a conversation. All right, so. And by the way, uh, in the chat room, 100% they prefer boom, conversation. Conversation, yeah. conversation, 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 conversation. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, <laughs> David Zetz, I like being explained topics. Like David, that. when a mommy and a daddy love each other very much. No, no go ahead. <laughs> All right, we are in the top nine podcasting tips to broadcast your message. And by the way, welcome. If you just joined us, this is the Bunker Bash. My name is Ed Rush. I'm here with my friend Paul Culligan. Uh, we're talking about podcasting, and we we are sharing the top nine tips. In fact, we're going to give you an extra one here towards the end because Paul. Always Wait, under write another one? and over delivers. Yeah, we got one extra one. Uh, but right. before I jump into that, Paul, take us to, I think we're up to number five podcast. Number five. Okay. This one's amazing that this isn't followed, but look at your numbers. Look at your numbers. Look at your numbers. Look at your numbers. Well, what numbers can I get? Well, first of all, you can get downloads. And that's an interesting number because... If you do a season of 10 episodes, one of your episodes will get downloaded considerably more than the other nine will. Why? Well, because that's a headline, basically. You know, that's the subject line in the email or that type of thing. Something is going to intrigue the audience to do that. That might be the time where you get found in Apple search. So there's the downloads. But here's the thing, Ed. What if you got 10,000 downloads and 10,000 people? Stop listening four seconds into the podcast. Is that a win? Still a download. It's is not that a giving win? you your business objectives or whatever you want to well, accomplish. If your business no. objective is downloads, go to five or you can get millions of them cheap. Right. right like if your only right. objective is downloads, you, you, you know, I, you don't even really need a podcast. Just get a web server and write a script. You know, it's it's not that complicated. So if your business objective is the downloads, you have a bad business objective. Yeah. But you can look at the numbers and you could see how far did they listen? And by the way, if half your audience more, you know, 10% into your episode leaves, yeah, that means that 50% of the people said, you know, this isn't for me. Yep. yep. Wow. First of all, that's a great piece of knowledge, you know, not to do that kind of episode anymore, you know? So it's a great piece, but, but you can look at that. Apple gives you those numbers. Spotify gives you those numbers. You can look at things Distance over time, one of the things we track for our customers is we track a thing called the new content ratio. And the new content ratio is in any given month, how much of your downloads was content that was released that month. Hmm. Now, I have permission to share this. I'm Joe Polish, I Love Marketing, one of our clients. In October 2019, less than 20% of his downloads were content released in October 2019. More than four out of every five people were going to his back catalog hmm. and listening to stuff in the back episodes. Now, by the way, that whole technology is your friend part. There's the ability to click a button and have a commercial running on a podcast episode that's five years old. That's right. So although it's a five-year-old interview, it's a commercial for what you're doing this week. Aha, tech is your friend. And yeah. by the way, if that kind of stuff freaks you out, hire a consultant to run it for you. Not that big of a deal. But know your numbers, know your downloads, know your consumption, know how long a podcast stays popular, know how much they go to the back catalog, know the numbers that matter because then you can make business decisions. Yeah, interestingly too, it also helps you. So two things. First, it helps you write good descriptions for your podcast. So That'll help with the downloads. Let me just tell you what's not a good description for a podcast. Episode three is not a good description for your yes. podcast because no one goes to search in Google for episode three. And if they're searching for episode three, it's not your show, okay? And by the way, so, the first couple of words for your description is not in this week's episode. That's right. Because that's, that's something that nobody's looking for either. That's right. So let me just give you a couple of examples of, of ideas for how to title an episode. 
the top nine podcasting tips to broadcast your message is a good title for a podcast episode because it's got the deliverable right there. So here's 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 a test on titling. If someone asks you, what what is that all about? After you say the title, your title doesn't work. Okay, for example, I would never say, the show's called the top nine podcasting tips to broadcast your message and have someone go, so what's the show about? I could, however, say something like, the elephant is yellow. And people go, what's that all about? And I'm not using that. I'm not making that up. That's actually one of my uh, former uh, friends, uh, former friends, one of my friends' former uh, uh, book titles before she changed it. It was The Elephant is Yellow. So you always want to have a book title or a podcast episode that people uh, can, uh, that, that they can uh, immediately know what the content is. And the second yeah, thing. Uh, Donald Miller has the grunt test. Yes. And it's fantastic. Grunt test. Caveman look at title, caveman grunt, caveman know what, what show is about. <laughs> yeah, and it's interesting because Don Miller broke that rule on Blue Like Jazz. But that was before. He's learned a few was, things since Blue Like Jazz. <laughs> but it was but it was before. And it, and by the way, you can break the rule. You just have to have a have to be really, really good. Right. The second thing on the numbers, which is really important, is to understand and be realistic about the numbers. So I'll just tell you that I track all the numbers on these shows, this Bunker Bash. And the first, uh, second, third, fourth episode, I started going through all the numbers and I realized these are our shows, roughly our shows. The average listen for the shows were about 18 to 20 minutes. And I have to say, at first I was offended because <laughs> I was like, wait a second, this is our show, man. Why isn't the average person watching 18 minutes? And what I realized is that's about 18 times the average on YouTube in the plus column. So that was actually really good because you have to remember for everybody watching one hour, there's somebody who watches the first five minutes and says, oh, I'll come back and watch it later. So that actually was a good number, but I didn't know at the time it was a good number. So the point is know your numbers, but also know what's good and what's 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 average because you may get- Now, can I make a bet? Effort. Can I make yeah. a bet with you? Yes. Okay. <laughs> If you look up the consumption of that episode on the podcast version, and I know you've released some of these as a podcast, I will bet you it is at least two times as much. Longer, right. Because people yeah. consume podcasts longer than live videos. Is that, is that yeah. what you think? Yeah. It, Interesting. Not not what I think. <laughs> what we've, no, looked, no, we've looked at the numbers, my friend. It's not yeah, a gun I mean, feeling. It's not. Yeah, it's the truth. And the thing about, too, about podcast is... It's meeting someone where they're at. So the truth is there are people who don't watch video. There's people that don't read. There are people that listen. There are people that read and there are people that watch. And I will tell you, I've asked and surveyed as many people as I could get to. And some people are like, look, all I listen to is podcasts. There's other people who are like, all I do is watch YouTube videos during the day while I'm working. I just have YouTube videos on. There's other people who are like, all I do is read. And you want to have your information out in all of those formats back to multicast marketing, right? It's back to like the original foundational principle for Paul. All right, so we are in the top nine podcasting tips to broadcast your message. My name is Ed Rush. I'm here with Paul Culligan. Paul, take me to number six. This one might hurt. Um, <laughs> what are you laughing at? Well, um, I mean, all these are hurting in some way because I'm feeling like, gosh, this has got to give us some work done. And by the way, we've got some free resources for you. We do. To help get the work done for you. But go ahead. Yes. Give me number six. Um, accept responsibility for your actions. I know people who spend a pie chart chunk size of their week on their podcast and they have no idea how it's doing. And it might suck. It might be doing terrible for you. Not all podcasts are good podcasts. Trust me on that one. Take responsibility for what your actions is. If you have on the average a 50 minute show and on the average people only listen for 30 minutes and you keep doing a 50 minute show, shame on you. Okay. Um, if you don't know your download numbers, you're just hoping that it works. And well, people tell me they like the show. Shame on you. Okay. Take responsibility for your actions and for what you're doing. And the whole game will change. Nobody ever says, you know, um, I threw a lot of money at Facebook ads and I don't really know if it's making me any money. Yeah. You know, nobody ever says, oh, I just bought a really expensive consultant and I have no idea if it's good for my business. <laughs> but yet podcasters now say, yeah, I do a podcast. I really don't know what it's doing. 
take responsibility for your actions, accept responsibility for your actions. Yeah, that's good too, because when I get asked to be on someone's podcast, I will almost always ask the question, how many downloads are you getting per episode? Uh, and I know a lot about the person the moment they answer that question. The last one I was I was on, the guy had the immediate answer to episode downloads and overall downloads, and it was actually an, quite an impressive number. It was a guy who was just previously interviewed on, on Bunker Bash, actually, last week. So the point is, if you're looking to attract quality guests, having responsibility and taking responsibility for the performance of your show actually really does help. So I like that. Yeah. All right. We are moving on to number seven. This is top nine podcasting tips to broadcast your message with Paul Culligan. Paul, take me to number seven. Number seven, serve your audience, not the checklists. <laughs> People come to me and 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 I can tell they bought, you know, the seven dollar bundled podcast ebook package on on warrior form or something like that. And then they have the checklist of things they're supposed to do. And and they say ridiculous things to me like, well, I need to make sure that when I launch my podcast, I launch with 10 episodes. And I ask them, what's your podcast about? I don't know yet. What are you trying to do with your podcast? I don't know yet. But I just know that I'm supposed to launch with 10 episodes, or I know that I'm supposed to buy the same mic that Ed uses, you know, or I know that I'm supposed to use audacity, or I know that I'm supposed to do this. If you don't know how this podcast is serving your audience, don't do the podcast. And it goes back to the niche part. Of course, if you don't know who your audience is, don't do the podcast. But if you know who they are, then you can ask, how does this serve my audience? Yeah. Now you're an entirely different game. And so if you are trying to do something that you heard you were supposed to do for a podcast, but that doesn't match what you know your audience needs, stop it, throw it away. If it's in an article that Ed wrote, if it's in an article that I wrote, don't care. Stop, throw it away, serve your audience. When you bring someone on your show, serve your audience. Even if it's the biggest person in the world, if it doesn't serve your audience, don't bring them on your show. Okay? Yeah, and serve one of the your audience, serve your audience, serve your audience. That's right on. Uh, one of the questions, one of the best things to ask is the question what someone wants. Yeah. Um, full transparency, full disclosure. Before I launched this show called The Bunker Bash, I sent out a survey to my list. It was actually one of the most responded to surveys uh, that I've ever had, uh, that I've ever sent out. I had over 150 responses. And I asked them, what are the kind of things that you want to talk about? Frankly, this show that we're doing right now, Paul, you and I, is part of one of the responses to that particular survey. Uh, on Monday, y'all don't know this because I'm just writing everything for next week. On Monday, I'm going to do an epi full episode on how to stop trading dollars for hours and get paid what you're worth. The reason I'm doing that episode is because the number one survey response was on that topic. And so intermittently, I've been teaching that as the guest in between uh, teaching from the guests. And so what Paul just said is, is right. It's 100% about the people that you're serving and what they want in their time right now. So um, it's it's one of the reasons why, if you, if you notice, when I start this show, I always start with a statement about you because fundamentally, the show is always about you. So that's that's very good, Paul. Cool. We got two more, man. You ready to go? Yep. All right. This is the top nine podcasting tips to broadcast your message. My name is Ed Rush. I'm here with Paul Culligan. We've done numbers one through seven. Paul, take us to tip number eight. Number eight, have a plan that you're willing to adjust. <laughs> have a plan that you're willing to adjust. What's your plan? That's the whole strategy review character I chatted about at the beginning of this. Have a plan that you're willing to adjust. Had a client comes to me and client says, we think our audience wants a 40 minute show. We go, great. Let's do season one of a 40 minute show. We did season one of a 40 minute show, 10 episodes in the season. And guess what? Across the board, everybody listened to about 20 minutes. Hmm. Okay. They adjusted. You know what they did? Season two was five episodes of two parts, part one and part two, each 20 minutes long. They were really into that 40 minutes of content thing, you know? And so season one was season two, episode one was part one, season two, episode two is part two, that kind of thing. Guess what happened? 
Yes, Ed. Season three. Well, <laughs> season two happens, and they listen for about five minutes of episode one, of part one, and they didn't come to part two. The audience right. was saying, I don't want 40 minutes of content. Right. So season three, being a good internet marketer or a, or, or a person who, who doesn't get hired for the good stage gigs, what they did was they decided to do a 40-minute episode in 20 minutes. You know? Yeah. yeah. And uh, that was even worse. And then finally, season four, they did a 20-minute episode. Yeah. And people were consuming all the way to the end and purchasing product and sharing with friends and commenting on social and doing all these things. And so the plan was a 40 minute show, but they were willing to adjust it because they looked at the numbers and realized that what their audience wanted was a 20 minute show. Now, does that mean, oh God, Paul just told me that we have to do 20 minute shows. That's what I learned at the Bunker Batch. No. Yeah. Thank you. But wanted. So have a plan. Yeah. That that's, you're that's, thank you for saying that last part too, because sometimes we get we get into the the mode where if it works for somebody else, it's it's bound to work for us. So your show is your show. You might right, have a show of audience. money that people want to listen to you for an hour. I listen to oh shoot, I probably listened to two or three episodes of the Navy SEAL. Um, what's his name? Jocko. Jocko. That yeah. guy's show is like three to four hours long, all right? That's not that's not a show I would listen to for that long, but I know people, who friends do? of mine, who've listened to every, there's like 150 episodes, four hours long, okay? So for his show and for his people, three to four hours is right. For the one that you just mentioned, Paul, 20 minutes is right, and here's the thing, you don't know that, until you do it. Okay. So, so now is the time to get into motion. Now is the time in to get, to get into action because what you're going to see, and by the way, you've been seeing this on this show too. You start to see things change and morph based on your audience and what they want. So it's good. I like that, man. All right. That was number eight, uh, which was have a plan that you're willing to adjust. By the way, that's a very good military uh, strategy as well. <laughs> so there's a phrase that says no plan survives contact with the enemy. So it's nice to have a plan. A plan is a place to start. For, uh, a place to start, and I'll tell you that I don't know any business owners who look back five, ten years and would ever have guessed they were going to be where they are right now, um, five or ten years ago. And it's true for all of us. All right, so we're coming down the pike onto number nine. And by the way, in a moment, we're going to catch up with your comments in chat, which have been so good. Uh, thank you, Denise, uh, for taking notes in chat. That was very nice of you. Uh, I'd love to hear what your biggest takeaway so far has been with Paul. Uh, we will have just a few minutes at the end of the show, probably like th three to five minutes at the most uh, for open Q&A. So if you have a question, type it into the live chat that says question and a little semicolon, uh, and we'll make sure Paul gets your question. We'll do rapid fire. So, so do the type of Bam. question. It could be Bam. Rapid, Bam. Fire rapid fire questions. All right, Bam. come on. So we are in the top nine podcasting tips to broadcast your message. My name is Ed Rush. This is Paul Culligan. Paul, take us to number nine. There's some three letters in here someplace. No, you're OCG. Optimal <laughs> consumption goal. This is like what you're do down you want with them? OPP. Oh, yeah. OCG, optimal consumption goal. How much do you want them to consume the show? If you're fine with them checking in, that's great. If you want them listening to the whole thing, that's great. Know what your goal is and then test to that goal. If your goal is 80%, are the episodes getting 80%? If your goal is 100%, I got clients. I got clients who are doing episodes that are getting 104, 105%. They're actually listening and rewinding. By the way, those aren't very long episodes. Um, but what is your optimal consumption goal? You got to know well, what that much? is. Then you got to know if it's working or not. So somebody who's starting a podcast, let's say their goal is to build their list, just to just to build their, their email following or their right. online social media following. Where would someone start with an OCG or an optimum consumption goal? Where, where would we start with that? Well... At what point in the episode are you telling people to join your list? Right. They got to listen at least that far. So let's say that's if five your minutes goal in. Is getting them, you know, I've had clients who have put ads in their shows that are fantastic, amazing, Michael Fortin level ads. But okay? they're at the end. <laughs> they're at the end and the people only listen about 50% and they thought yeah. the ad was bad. But the fact of the matter was nobody was listening to it. Yeah. Because they didn't go that far into it. So if your goal is to get people to join your list and you make the offer for the list 10 minutes in, then your OCG is 10 minutes in. Interesting. 
Well, it's it that is interesting because I was so I was on Johnny Dumish's show, which is essentially about a twenty-two minute show. John does a commercial break right in the middle, and then but Tim Ferriss on his show, it's commercial, commercial right in the beginning. So, is that based off of what they understand in terms of the listener length or where they want to put their ads, or how does that work? Well, Tim Ferriss has said in public many times that he puts all of his ads at the beginning and he expects people to skip through them. <laughs> Well, that's, that's good because that's, that's what I do. <laughs> um, John yeah. has said many times that the reason he puts ads in his shows is because he teaches people to put ads in his shows and he has to lead by example. Okay. Um, the right. numbers to look at when you're looking at John and the numbers you're looking at when you're looking at at uh, Tim is how much Tim gets for CPM for ads that he encourages people to click over. balls. And for John, huh. when he does his monthly uh, report, look at how much money he made in affiliate marketing versus how much money he made in ads and you'll know where the real money is. Interesting, right? Because John publishes all of his. They're all there, man. Um, and by the way, if you're, if you're just starting out, or if you've got a podcast that you're just growing your listener base, the first thing to do, forget advertising, forget going out and looking for sponsors. The first thing to do is to throw up a very simple lead page. In a moment, Paul and I are going to show you a very simple lead page uh, and throw up a very simple lead page and see who goes there. If you have 200 people downloading your episode and 100 people are opting in, that's actually pretty good. You're rocking it, okay? So start there, because that's how you can start to see how an audience responds. I had a fishing podcast, Paul knows this, back in the day. Actually, Paul helped me launch this fishing podcast. We were in the top 25 of all sports podcasts. I think it was the number one sports podcast. We were in the top 25 of all podcasts at one point when we launched this fishing show, which was amazing, back in the day. I don't even know why I did that, frankly, but I, I did. Uh, and that, that, we had a... Uh, literally thousands of people that were that were uh, entering into a contest that showed us, hey, guess what? Our listeners are actually taking action. So the first thing you can do is put up a simple opt-in page and start driving your folks there for something free just to see how they respond. So that was number nine. All right. So, and I've got one, two, three, four questions. We're going to do rapid fire. But Paul, uh, you've got a bonus tip. Tell us your bonus tip and then we'll do some Q&A. Bonus. Make your decision based on the numbers. If you make a decision based on, I heard that, I think that, I feel that, you're making the wrong decision. We can track how much they download. We can track how much they listen. We can track, you know, I love people, you know, how do I know if my call to actions work? Well, we'll track it. How do I know if it's a call to action based entirely on my podcast? Only make that call to action available on your podcast. Make decisions based on your numbers. And that's why the whole rules at the beginning was track your numbers. I think that I hear that Tim Ferriss, this Joe Polish, that forget it, make decisions based on your numbers. You do that and the podcast will do really, really, really well. If you base on anything else, uh, it's, you know, I can find think of a lot of bad words to say, but it's just, it's just not a really good idea. So the take home that I want everybody to put in here, and we'll go to the Q and a rapid in a second is just decisions based on numbers. Yeah, so make your decisions based on your numbers. And I'll tell you, that doesn't just work for podcasts. That works for well, yeah. everything you do in your life. business, period. Actually, yeah, in your life too. I will tell you that the best people, the best event promoters know, I, if you ask them, how many people show up to your event versus how many people register? They know that exactly, exactly. If, you, if the, you, they ask how many people stay for the whole time, they know that exactly. The podcasters know their numbers. The internet marketers, we were just talking about Michael Fortin, who's one of the best copywriters in the world. I can guarantee you every business Michael works with, he knows the percentage opt-in rate on each of the pages that he's created. The number of people that sign up to take the next step, that's what great marketers do and that's what great business owners do. Uh, so no, make your decision based on the numbers. Thank you, Denise, for your awesome notes inside a chat. You are amazing. All right, Paul, so we've got about seven minutes left. You want to just do some rapid fire Q&A? Yeah, let's do some rapid. Put up the link. So I have been asked for 15 years for the gear guide. And oh. finally, we finally got smoked. The constantly updated gear guide. If you want to know what we recommend at the podcast partnership, go to podcast slash recommends. Right now, it's a right, Google Doc. So here's that we update on a regular basis. But that's the microphone choice and the streaming choices and everything's there. All right, so, so I'm going to share my that up, real quick. And then I'll just show you, oh, here we go. I'm going to show you two things. So the first thing is, uh, this is, hang on a second. There we go. 
Uh, this is the website, Team Before Tech. This is where um, Paul said you can go download your free stuff. There's also a video series there. And the other uh, website was, uh, the, um, tell it to me again, Paul, because I had it. Podcastpartnership.com forward slash recommends. Podcastpartnership.com forward slash recommends. Recommends. And by the way, those links are in the description below, but when I, I typed it in wrong. Um, Podcast partnership, not the. <laughs> Podcastpartnership.com forward slash recommends. All right. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to jump out of this, the screen sharing before I completely no make it. A, it's below you in the description. Okay. Both on Facebook and on YouTube. I, I don't know why, Paul, I decided to start. It's all right. It's all right. I it's, typed it's like a chicken mind. on amphetamines. It's a minor miracle. I've been able to write five books and I actually wrote those with my fingers too. All right. So uh, those are the free uh, places for you to go. And that's where you can connect with Paul. Um, so let's bounce through some of the questions really quickly. Dennis Bauer, first question. Paul, do you check your numbers daily for all tech social media or how frequently? I don't tech. I, I don't check every day. I have somebody internally give me the once a week numbers. What that's happens great. on Tuesday so, doesn't matter. What happens this week matters. That's good. So, so, and that's just so you know, that's what I do too. I have my team aggregate numbers and deliver them to me in, in, a, in a format that I can digest so that I don't have to go click it every Quick day. Um, great. Aaron Miller, my man from Dallas, Texas. Question, what is the best way to find podcasts who are looking for guests? Just for some context, Aaron is an estate planning attorney. Uh, so if he's looking to be in front of his market, where would you suggest that he looks for uh, to be a guest on people's podcasts? I would run away from people looking for guests because that means they don't have content. That means they what they're doing. And that means they have no audience. And that means they're not serving the audience. However, Aaron, you're an estate planner. OK, go to podcasts that would serve people in that place and offer them a tool, offer them a product, offer them something to give to their audience. Aaron, if you have a product, offer them into the affiliate program, that kind of thing. You know, if you go to those podcasts that meet that audience, here's how you can serve your audience. If you find somebody who says, oh, we just like to talk about stuff, you're never going to get a single lead. It's a waste of your time. So search podcasts in your industry reach or, or search podcasts for your niche reach out to them, offer to be a guest, and tell them how you will serve their audience, you'll be in a great place. Good, all right, so, and it's interesting, right? Because if people are saying, hey, we're looking for guests, that probably means they don't have anyone. If they're, right. if they're not, but they're reaching your market, you could probably reach out to them. Uh, and I'll yeah. tell you, Aaron, there's a few podcasts that I've, I've gotten on, and there's a handful that, I'm, that I've tried to get on, uh, initially didn't work, and I'll tell you what my strategy was. Uh, so the ones that uh, the ones that I got on, I just reached out to the host and said, "Hey, I, uh, I love your show. I'm interested in being a guest." Uh, and then, but sometimes the contact form doesn't work, or they don't respond to you in Facebook. So the next step that I almost always take is I try to find out who do I know that knows that person. Uh, and usually at that point, the person makes an introduction, and then I get on the show. So those are two different ways to get on show. So Paul, quickly, what's the history? What's the backdrop? <laughs> How'd you do the backdrop, Edwin Berry? Well, Bunker Bash, fact of the matter is I moved out of my studio three days ago. And last night at about eight o'clock, I had to get ready for the Bunker Bash. So this is it. Um, here here we go. Afghanistan. So you want some, uh, you want some pure transparency here? <laughs> there we go. That's what you're looking at right now, my friend. That's, but, that's what you're looking at. Instead, well, we're going to um, match. The so, Afghanis um, weren't giving the COVID-19 numbers, so Paul moved out of Oregon for safety. All right. Yeah, yeah. So so um, uh, this is this is necessity is the mother of invention. I will re <laughs> be redoing the recording, but I um, wanted to have fun with Ed and with this whole bunker theme. Thank you for the full transparency. I love it. Uh, by the way, nice comment from Jim Butts. My biggest takeaway, I now have a great list of considerations when I put my podcast together. Uh, and you'll remember Jim, Paul, from the events that we used to do. Oh, yeah. Denise says... I've heard podcast conversations when people keep interrupting each other. Is this good and keeping it rolling or is it annoying to the podcaster? What do you think about that? Uh, run a test. Yeah. Do one where people talk over each other. Do one where people don't talk over each other. See how long they listen. Interesting. By the way, this takes you back to which point? The numbers. Number five. This takes you back to number five. I love the answer, Paul. Thank you for that. Um, number five is to look at your numbers and number uh, bonus tip was to make your decisions based on your numbers. And so uh, that really flows right with what you just said. Try it one way, try it another way, and see what happens. Uh, so I like that. 
Um, all right, Chess says, on promotion, what is the best platform to promote, if, in your opinion, and is there such thing as too much promoting? What do you think? There's never such thing as too much promotion, um, in, 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 in my opinion. That's never bad. Um, the answer to which is the best platform is also the answer to how long is a piece of string. <laughs> no, it depends what you're doing. Um, it depends who, yeah. you know, if you've got a mailing list of a, of a million people who open up their email yep. every day, best yep. platforms your email. That's right. Hands down. Um, right. you know, if you have a rabid following and you've got over 10,000 people on Instagram and people like to swipe up at all, that's really, really good. Um, I like overcast, which is one of the things that's in that big list. Um, overcast has, um, an ad buying option. It's a small market, but it's the best way to buy um, a, um, uh, an audience that doesn't know you. Um, it, it really just depends on what you're doing. I haven't seen much success from people in Facebook yet. Um, and unless you're willing to pay about six or $7 per subscriber, but, um, you know, it just depends who your audience is, what they're doing. Yeah. I mean, so the okay, first step um, there, Russell Brunson did a thing. Russell Brunson did a thing where he did a lost leader of a preloaded media player with the last 350 episodes of a show. And then what he did was for the people who said, no, he said, that's okay. Just subscribe to the podcast. And then it shot him up to number one in business um, j just by doing that. So it depends on what you're doing. Track the numbers, try them all, see what works. Yeah, so three things really quickly just to outline what Paul said. So first of all, there's a strategy I call love the one you're with. What that means is if you've got a following someone somewhere, start there. So if you've got a bunch of people on Instagram, start there. If you've got a bunch of people on Facebook, start there. If you've got a bunch of people on YouTube, then start there. Or if you have followers on your email list, start there. And frankly, I had the email, so that's where I started and brought people over to the show that's on YouTube and Facebook. The second part is if you don't have an audience already, go where they are. So if you're working with business owners, go to LinkedIn. If you're working with 70 year olds who like cat videos, then go to Facebook. You know what I'm saying? So uh, go to but, in front of the audience and where they are. Good. What? But to what you said, if you're working with business owners, go to LinkedIn. See, what a lot of people do is I'm working with business owners and I hear that TikTok is cool. <laughs> you know, so, so, so chess, you know, go to where your audience is and I don't know who your audience is, but, but you do, that's the cool thing. You can't without that many kids, you know, where your audience is and you know how they pay you. And so, you know, we're, we're at a good place here. Go there, market there, promote there. All right. So this is the last question I've got. Uh, by the way, Jim says, nice to see you again. Um, and, uh, let's see, Rob Actus, uh, says, what is the best in your opinion, what's the best podcasting hosting platform? And just for some reference, um, Rob Actus is the audio talent, the voice talent that read my book, 21 Day Miracle. So if you go to Audacity uh, and you get the 21 Day Miracle book, uh, and I should just Audacity say- Audacity is a recording platform. Um, oh, did I say Audacity? Audible. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we were talking about Audacity today yeah, Audible, about yeah. how it doesn't work. So thank you, Audible. On Audible, when you go to 21 Day Miracle, you'll hear Rob's voice reading my book. And by the way, if you were willing to uh, try that book out in exchange for a great review, email me, okay? Because uh, I've got some coupon codes for for uh, Audible, not yeah, Audacity. All right, now back to now, you, Paul, for the last here's question. Here's the deal. At the time of this recording, I'm a big fan of Libsyn, L-I-B-S-Y-N. And That's what on I use. that page, you've got a coupon code that will get you for the next month. So it's like at the time of this recording, it's April 9th. If you use the coupon code Paul, you will get all of April. You will get all of May free and you won't have to pay until June. For recording, oh, this cool. is my favorite. Now, I stress at the time of this recording because things change. The microphone that I used to like is not the microphone that I like today, might not be the microphone I like next week. So that's why we have the podcastpartnership.com forward slash recommends. I will always have there the host that I like the most. Right now, I love Libsyn, been there for a while. It would take a lot to get me away from them, but things can change. And by having this constantly updated tool, um, it's something that we can always go to. All right, I'm going to share this tool right now because I told you that I was going to pull this page up. This, by the way, I don't need you to look at every... Uh, line and jot and tittle on this. What I want to show you is what Paul is making available to you. And by the way, you don't even have to opt in for this right now. This nope, is just no a podcast, uh, podcastpartnership.com slash recommends. And you can see you, you've got editing, you've got audio editing software, you've got uh, headphones and interview recording. Paul, this resource is ridiculous. And, and I by the way, say, the stuff oh. in bold is the stuff that we're using right now. 
It's amazing. Uh, uh, let me say, let me tell you, I've not seen anything like this in terms of a resource guide uh, for, I mean, you've even got TubeBuddy and things that, like YouTube. I use this, by the way. Um, so this resource document is outstanding. Uh, this is Paul's document. If you uh, links aren't working or something, you let him know. Uh, and also, uh, this is he may get an affiliate commission, which he deserves, frankly, because this thing is amazing. Okay, so make sure you go there. That's totally free, and make sure you thank Paul for that because that's a really, really great resource. All right, we have come to the end of our questions. Paul, I'm going to do a quick wrap up, uh, and then I'm going to pitch it to you for your final thoughts. So before I do that, uh, I'm going to take you through the tips really quickly, just to review. If you just joined us, my name is Ed Rush. I'm here with Paul Culligan. We're talking about the top nine podcasting tips to broadcast your message. Number one uh, was six key team members. That doesn't have to be you or it doesn't have to be six different people. You can fill some of those roles and you almost always will fill at least one of those roles. Number two, tech is your friend. Number three, know your niche. Number four, have a conversation, not an interview. Number five, look at your numbers. Number six, accept responsibility for your actions. Number seven, serve the audience, not the checklist. Number eight, uh, have a plan that you're willing to adjust. Number nine, Know your OCG, which stands for Optimum Consumption Goal. Number nine, make, or sorry, that was number nine. Number uh, bonus, number bonus, make your decisions based on your numbers. Paul Culligan, final thoughts, take us home. Ed once taught me the four M's. <laughs> Ed, it's a beautiful thing, my friend. Market, who's your market? That's that whole niche part. Message. What is your message to that market? You know, because your market could be stay-at-home moms. Your message could be humor, a break from staying home at momming. Your your topic could be homeschooling. Your topic could be, you know, um, living like the pioneer woman. There could be a lot of topics to a different market message. Third thing, where's the money in that? Okay. Um, Because if this is a business podcast and there's no money in it, run away, run away, run away. Then the fourth is the media. Now, I love podcasting and podcasting does some pretty amazing things and podcasting makes some really cool things possible, but it might not be the best media. My mom, love her dearly, podcasting is not the way to reach mom. A uh, printed page with really, really big letters is the way to reach mom. And so when you understand the market message money media, um, now you've got a reason to podcast. And by the way, if you don't like the answer to what the media change the media maybe like podcasting isn't for everybody it's pretty powerful it's pretty doable but unless you know that market message money bit it's there and, and ed you'll notice on that that landing page is a, a worksheet inspired by what you've taught me in the past it's called the four m's of ah, podcast cool. monetization so we'll end with that at least i will i just i just i'm confused that you can't just call your mom what's up with that you have to mom mom to tells me um mom will tell you <laughs> just that she can't podcast because she doesn't have an apple. And you ask my mom, um, won't your son buy you one? And she'll say, oh no, they're too complicated. You know, <laughs> one day I come, mom has the iHeartRadio app on her Kindle Fire. Didn't know mom knew how to install apps, okay? And mom, why did you install the app? She said, because the radio told me to, which is a whole other story. That's but great. I go, mom, you know, I'm on that yeah. app. And mom, as only mom can do, she looks at me straight in the eye, she goes, no, hun, that's just for radio. <laughs> oh, it That's gets only better. for famous people. Paul. It gets better. I go, mom, I'm on the app. She goes, you mean you're on the radio now? <laughs> and she was so happy. She was so proud of me. Still hasn't listened to a thing I've done, but um, there we go. At least, at least she's proud. All right. Thank you so much for joining us, Paul. You're the man, dude. Thanks for coming. Um, thanks for the top nine tips. Actually, there were 10 tips uh, that you could use. Make sure to say hello to Paul in chat. We'll stick around here for just a couple minutes on chat to say hello to you, uh, but we're going to wrap up the show. Uh, this was the top nine podcasting tips to broadcast your message. There's Paul Culligan. You saw a brief clip of him with the actual green screen and not in the Afghani uh, bunker. Thanks, Paul. I appreciate you, man. Thanks for joining us. All right. We'll talk to you guys soon.